Hey, welcome to another episode of Chaz Beer Reviews. Got a really special beer today. This was sent to me from Fuller's. This is their 2014 Vintage Ale. Yeah, kind of a burgundy color, kind of a rusty brown. You know, the head came up to the rim when I poured it. You know, about a finger and a half, two fingers there. Aroma? Mmm. That's just classic, classic British style, like old ale, barley wine, vintage ale, whatever you want to call it. Just huge fruit notes on here. Cherry, almost strawberry, uh, you know, prune, plum, fig, stuff like that. You know, kind of like the Belgian, the Belgian fruits, but without that Belgian yeast ester. I mean, it's just classic. It's British, British yeast esters. Um, it smells very sweet. I don't smell any alcohol. It's 8.5. See if I taste any. Cheers. Mmm. Yeah, that's that's really good. I haven't had man, I haven't had like a classic, like British, real English barley wine old ale type of beer like this in a long time. Or at least one that's held up. You know, I did I did the last beer review was the uh, Bigfoot, and I thought that was like kind of underwhelming. This is like this is what that beer should have been. Nice kind of rich sweetness, but it's not cloying. What I said about the aroma, like cherry, you know, uh, plum, prune, things like that, they definitely come through in the taste. Let me look at what the BJCP says here. Medium to high malt character with luscious malt complexity. Agree with that. Often with nutty, caramelly, or molasses-like flavors. Um, slight slight confectionery on here. I do get some significant bitterness on here. Light chocolate or roasted malt flavors are optional, but should never be prominent. I would, there's really nothing in the way of chocolate or roasted malt here. Balance is often malty sweet, but maybe well hopped. The impression of bitterness often depends on the amount of aging. Yeah, uh, like I just said, it actually is, you know, noticeably hoppy, but it's not like it's not like a West Coast IPA or anything like that. Moderate to high fruity esters are common. We take on dried fruit or vineyard characters, so that finish. Maybe vary from dry to somewhat sweet. I would say it's definitely, actually is pretty dry in the uh, aftertaste. Extending aging may contribute oxidative flavor similar to fine old sherry port of Madeira. Alcohol strength should be evident though not overwhelming. That's that's definitely true. I mean, actually I'd say the alcohol in this is like not even really noticeable. I mean, 8.5. I mean, I'm not drinking this at room temperature. Maybe if I was drinking at room temperature. I would feel it, but I get like no heat. I get like no like actual alcohol taste. I mean, to me, it's just more fruit than anything else. I wonder what they say on the when it was brewed and bottled. You know, the type on here is so small, I can bear it. I can't even read it. I I can read. I'm not that old. But best before end of 2024. So I guess they want you to. They can sell it as up to 10 years. I'm going to take a break, sip on this a little bit more, check out my advert, as they would say over there, for this book, and I will be right back with my final thoughts. Hey, craft beer drinkers, have we got a book for you, The Handbook of Porters and Stouts. This book documents the greatest examples of dark beer available on the market today, from old world traditional brews to American craft breweries pushing the boundaries of what dark beer can be. You'll learn about the origins of the styles, as well as the brewers behind the beer. Available in bookstores November 11th, or pre-order from Amazon at a discounted rate today. Come to the dark side with the Handbook of Porters and Stouts by Josh Christie and Chad Polenz. All right, I am back finishing up the Fuller's Vintage Ale 2014 edition. You know, I'm going to top this off a little here. It's got a lovely... I don't know if you saw it pouring out of the glass or the bottle there, but it's actually more of like an orange copper color. It's almost yeah, maybe my my shirt's throwing it off, but depending on where you hold it. Anyways. Let's rate this thing on right beer. For aroma, I'm gonna go nine out of ten. Like I said at the beginning, just love that fruity bouquet, the classic British style, no alcohol presence, no off flavors, nothing. Just smells smells really good. Nine out of ten. Appearance, I'm gonna go the full five out of five. Love the color. Yeah, it's a little cloudy, but you know, it's nothing unusual for the style. Did have a nice pretty pretty big head and it was leaving I mean you can't really tell now, but it was leaving a ring of lacing for every single swig. For taste, again I'm gonna go nine out of ten. I think it's really delicious. Uh sweet, you know, pretty complex, but not like 
cloying, sickly sweet or anything like that. Just when you when I think of a strong British beer, like this is exactly what I think of and it's exactly what I want. Really tasty. I have had better, so that's why I'm giving it a nine, not a ten. Um, palette, I'm gonna go five out of five. Really comfortable mouthfeel, super soft, smooth going down. I get like just a really faint alcohol warmth now um, in the throat, but it's not like it's not like breathing fire or anything like that. Um, you know, 8.5 is a pretty big beer. Um, even, but I think like this would like this is something that you could give to a beginner because like they probably wouldn't feel it or notice it. Overall, I'm going to go 17 out of 20, which gives it a total score of 4.5, which is a 10 out of 10 on the Chad's Beer Review scale. So there you go. 10 out of 10 for Fuller's Vintage Ale 2014 edition. Um, thanks to the person, I forget their name, at Fuller's who sent me this. Just arrived by FedEx or UPS the other day. So I do have some... I know we've been doing strong beer, like barley wines and old ales and stuff like that. We're going to get back to some IPAs and, and more American traditional style beers like that pretty soon. So thanks you guys out there for watching, and I will see you next time. Cheers.